about 10 years ago uh, that I wrote a little email that started like this. It said, uh, every border you cross, every purchase you make, every call you dial, every cell phone tower you pass, friend you keep, article you write, site you visit, subject line you type, and packet that you route is in the hands of a system whose reach is unlimited and whose safeguards are not. At the consensus conference, renowned computer intelligence expert Edward Snowden presented a 30-minute speech in which he discussed the current status of artificial intelligence and why ChatGPT is so popular right now. But Snowden emphasized his worries that OpenAI is not really open and, quite frankly, that it is not as intelligent as people believe. Snowden worries about the lack of people who will be able to correct errors when artificial intelligence does overtake human intelligence. Ultimately, though, Snowden is of the opinion that everyone should receive an education, and that AI should be used for the benefit of the populace rather than by for-profit organizations in the government. Listen to Snowden's remarks first. But the important thing from that is that they didn't stop. And this brings us to today. They're doing it even more now. Uh, they changed their laws to try to shake themselves loose from having an answer to the courts. Uh, and, and the question that we need to consider when looking to the future is if government is you know, the great teacher of the people, uh, as has been said, uh, what lesson did the rest of the world, uh, particularly corporations, draw from that, uh, that impunity uh, for the lawbreaking um, and, and the policy assumption that has been projected to everyone that this is something that's necessary and legitimate to do. Not only are they going to do it regardless of what courts say, uh, they're going to do it even more. Um, well, 10 years is a long time in technology. If we were all being ingested into a system, and the reality back then was that it would end up on the death of a person like me who had a front called X key score, that was just the code name for it, uh, which was a kind of cool for size. I and many others had to manually go into this uh, distributed, uh, federated query system, as it's called, because the data is so vast and it's in so many places, you can't move it from uh, this data center over there back to the NSA without everyone realizing what's happening. So what we do is we send what's small, the query, what you're picking for, to all the tap all around the world, basically. And then they process it for you against all of us, and then they send back just the results. Um, and this is where we see decentralization uh, being used for, for sort of evil rather than good. It's a centralized system. Uh, it's a decentralized kind of query. Now, they were trying to automate this in the crudest of ways, just uh, uh, they had their own uh, sort of <laughs> almost bash scripting type system uh, where they would go, all right, anything that matches this grep state, try to pull off the wire. Um, what if we didn't need to do queries? We didn't, we didn't have to move the shell game around. What if the data centers answered the questions for us? What if they took out the constraint, which was how many people like me could they find and clear uh, and get to keep the secret? Uh, it was done everyone uh, automatically, algorithmically, by machines that would never betray them, right? Uh, well, the secret would have been kept forever. And that's where we're headed. We're seeing more power concentrated into fewer hands. And we're seeing companies, corporations, and other states that didn't have this technology 10 years ago, but now they do, go, well, why don't we do this too? They can't complain too loudly if they're doing it more than anyone, right? Uh, and so now we see Amazon, Facebook, everybody, Microsoft, your insurance agency, the you know hospital, uh, all looking at trying to adopt these same capabilities. Uh, and I, I think the question is, you know, as it moves from ads onto other things, most people queue onto the things that are uh, photogenic that you can immediately sort of arrest and grab and and, and visualize, which are pictures, facial recognition, you think about security cameras, you think about license plate readers, and that's true, it's there. The driver's license databases, access to them is sold uh, by many states, whether it's to researchers and academics, uh, whether it's to private companies. Uh, your passport is this big shifted uh, through the wire processed by these third-party companies to get a visa. Uh, all those pictures on your social media. Uh, the idea here is that the face is presumed to be a universally unique identifier. And there is nothing more that computers love, programmers love, and people who run large databases and collect data sets love, 
and being able to uniquely identify actors within a set. Uh, that's your phone number, right? That's your email address. No one else has these. They belong to you. Uh, usernames are not universally unique across the web, but they are on a service. They are on a platform. And I think the thing that you think about the implications uh, that we haven't hit but are, are about to hit hard is we need to move away from this. Uh, because when the machines start doing the thinking for the people, uh, and they're reasoning probabilistically the same way that I would reason probabilistically, right? Uh, but there is some kind of accountability, or at least we hope there's some kind of accountability. It's not true. Yeah. Uh, but the system depends on the idea that there's accountability. What happens when the machine starts making mistakes? And what happens when the machine starts making mistakes? Uh, we'll call them. Uh, being closed off, even when they were previously opened. Uh, like naming a company OpenAI <laughs> uh, is a cruel joke. Right, and since they refuse to provide public access to their trading data, their models, their weights, and so on. But they're a leader in the space. They're being rewarded. They're being rewarded for antisocial behavior. And it's not just them. Stable Diffusion, which I think is really a phenomenal project and super interesting. Uh, it, it's the most important project for uh, creating large generative image models. Um, is uh, they tripled their uh, training set from uh, version 1.5 to 2.0 because they were worried about moral panics and being accused of this, that, and the other, instead of taking a, sort of a principled position that, look, the, the liability is distinct between the people who create the model and the people who use the model, which we know in America already works because you see it with guns, right? And if they aren't regulating guns, they're not going to regulate AI in the same way. Um, but the question is, so what do we do about this when we see to train a model uh, takes, you know, a hundred million dollars uh, of equipment, compute, you're renting it, you're beg borrowing, stealing it, whatever. Uh, and, you know, a single one of these cards costs $10,000, uh, whereas the consumer GPUs by companies like NVIDIA are being in the same way purposefully crippled to have low amounts of VRAM, uh, much lower than should be in an iterative model given uh, the, the next gen model, rather, uh, given how cheap this stuff is now. Uh, but they're intentionally getting it off and, you know, saying we'll sell these at $10,000 a pop to anybody who'll buy them, knowing uh, that they're selling shovels in a gold rush, right? Uh, and the question for the policy prescription legislatively, it, it's, it's very difficult, uh, particularly for somebody who comes from a more libertarian approach to this, because you start going, all right, the, the idea between uh, surveillance and surveillance is this idea that you can watch the people above them. Uh, but the reality of the world we live in is that corporations and governments are observing us more and more. We are becoming more legible to them, and we are becoming more malleable before them. Because if they can observe enough of your behavior, they can predict your behavior, particularly as these valuables or, or as these uh, models become uh, more advanced. And it doesn't have to be 10 out of 10 times, but everybody understands you have a favorite uh, item on the menu. You likely have a favorite seat uh, in the restaurant. You view the tabs in your browser in a certain order. You know, you don't even type in the website name. You just refresh on it or click to the other one. When your browser closes and then it reopens, uh, that behavior is unique to you. How many people in the world do you think share the exact set of browser tabs that you have open? Uh, people don't understand that one million uh, is a very small number to a machine. Uh, and, and so, like, when you have this delta in legibility, you have this delta in capability, how are we going to control the institutions that are controlling us if we don't have access to similar capabilities? And I think we're starting to see, and I, I haven't seen it really pick up yet, but, you know, people are going to be bringing the red flag of a kind of software communism. Uh, where we need to declare that models must be open. And for example, companies could still be granted an exclusive uh, commercial uh, usage right, a kind of license for a limited period, in the same way the copyright So, uh, for example, uh, or with pharmaceutical protection and generics, as long as they follow the rules uh, and publish their models freely for individual academic or non-commercial use. Uh, but what if they don't? Right? And, and they try to exploit the model in secret, uh, contra the public interest. Uh, that's when you start getting this, this kind of revolutionary thinking, which, uh, again, I'm not sure I agree with, but you can certainly understand the reasoning behind it, uh, where they go, look, 
uh, then their commercial monopoly gets invalidated, and the models could be taken by any means necessary, uh, whether it's stolen, you know, and a kind of information wants to be free way really released, uh, or compelled by a state that has, you know, those kind of uh, values. And, you know, if, if this were the case, actually, it would be incredible because this idea that the government is not agile is, of course, true. They are always, you know, three to five years behind. But when they come, they come hard and with a lot of resources, they catch up quickly. And then because of the Delta resources uh, and the veil of secrecy, they tend to actually uh, have extraordinary capabilities. They're kept in secret for a very long time. If we knew what they could do, and we had access to similar capabilities, maybe we could finally start getting some public value out of these spy agencies. Maybe they could stop spying on the public and start spying for the public. That would be a net good. What do you make of this statement made by Snowden? In what direction do you think AI will go in the future? Leave out a comment. Please click the like button if you thought the information was valuable. This will help us reach more people who might appreciate what we have to say. To keep up with our most recent material, be sure to click the subscribe button if you're a new subscriber to the channel. Please come back for the next one. Thank you for watching.